All right, number one, config reset. Let's say you've got yourself into a configuration hell and you just want to boot the system up with the original configuration, power the unit off, hold down restore. And no matter what config changes you made, everything will boot up restored to the original config. Absolutely perfect. Next up, let's say that you plug your C64 into a display that can't display PAL, or it's rolling and you can't read it, it's black, whatever. Here's what you do. Power off your Commodore 64, and we're going to use sort of an emergency NTSC mode. Hold down Commodore and N, flip it back on, and it will immediately jump into NTSC, making sure that whatever display you have connected to is working. Number three, cartridge dumping. I get asked this all the time. Can I dump this cartridge or any cartridge using the Commodore 64U? Unfortunately not. Even with this cool device, uh, I'm afraid cartridge dumping is impossible without a hardware modification. Number four, Muse files. I originally said that you can't play Muse files directly on the C64 Ultimate because it like loads them up as a program and it doesn't even work. However, that's only partially true. If you copy it out of a disk image and place it directly on the file system, then give it the appropriate extension of .mus, which now it has PRG. Let's get rid of that. Now, when you try to run it, yes, it works exactly like SIDS do, and this is awesome. This might be my favorite tip of the entire day. Next up, the bin files that you used for Jiffy DOS or Speed DOS, I told you that you had to copy them into ROMs and then assign them. There's actually a shortcut way to do it. Pointed out, of course, by you good folks out there. Find your bin file and just hit enter on it. And then you can load it directly into Flash and or set it as your 1541 or 1581 or Commodore Kernel, whatever you want to do. We're just gonna set all of these really, really fast. Have ourselves a little jam session here. And uh, not once did I have to pick them up and copy them for myself. They all just copied right on over by themselves. That's a great tip. Thanks a bunch for those, who, many of you who sent that in. Next up, internals revisited. You've asked a lot of questions. First off, where is the micro SD card slot? It's not outside the machine. It is internal right here. I realize everything is marked on the uh, motherboard, but it's kind of hard to see. Also, these two USB slots, the bottom one doesn't work. That one at the bottom doesn't work. Only the top one works. So make sure you're using that one instead. Now, can you take an old Commodore 64 keyboard and wire it up to this brand new Commodore 64? Believe it or not, you can. And forgive the uh, condition of this one. It's a little old, but you can see it does indeed work. And that is pretty dang cool. USB ports, what can you plug in there? Can you plug in a USB keyboard to the USB ports and have it work? Believe it or not, you can, and it works actually very well. What about a hub? Yes, you can plug a hub in, but make sure it's powered or you may have problems. Do yourself a favor, if you're gonna have a hub, just get a powered hub. What about an Amiga mouse? Can you use an Amiga mouse? I realize that's not USB, but it doesn't work anyway. Even if you do have a USB mouse, uh, it unfortunately does not work. So you're gonna have to get a Commodore mouse. Thanks to the power of API calls, you can actually write your own software like this tool I wrote in PowerShell to control your Commodore 64 remotely. How cool is that? Oddly enough, I get asked this a lot. Can I use a Sega controller with my C64 Ultimate? And the answer actually is yes. We have a wired one here. Wireless ones would require power to the nine pin port, which this does not have. So don't try to use a wireless one, but a wired Genesis controller, this works a treat. The A button and the C button aren't gonna do anything nor start, but if you got one laying around, it works. All right, so in one of my previous videos, I mentioned that if you had drive eight as a physical drive and drive eight as a virtual drive, when you tried to launch something like Maverick here, uh, it wouldn't work, right? I basically told you to unplug drive eight, but there's another easier way. Simply go to the A drive and change it over to drive 10 or 11. That moves it out of the way. And now you can actually run Maverick from drive 10. Remember, not every game, not every piece of software will run from a drive that's not eight. In fact, a lot of games, especially like commercial games, aren't going to run on drive 10. But if all you're looking for is Maverick, well, we got you covered. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know what to do. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.